Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. I sit in front of one of the, the few audiences on earth where I don't have to explain who I am. That there is a consensus of belief of understanding that the energy that fills the room esoteric though it might be is so real and that you cannot disband belief when you feel your heart being touched you can't tell your intellect that it's right when you feel the love of God on your shoulder and there are those who feel that the intellect and the emotional heart do not belong together that one would not support the other and that you have to choose one or the other but it is the balanced human being especially the one who has stepped out of singularity who understands that the intellect and the emotions when balanced create belief or well, the intellectual human cannot deny the love of God it cannot deny home what it wishes to deny however is that it's happening in three dimensions this is the subject. My partner is apprehensive. For last year we told him that there would be some channelings he would do where he would explain the unexplainable. And this is difficult. For it requires thinking out of the box for translating the channels through a filter which comes from a different paradigm and so we've given him an opportunity to think differently so that he would be able to teach it and the reason he is apprehensive is because it breaks literally the paradigm of metaphysics that which is beyond physics is still biased but there are light workers who have figured out what it is. And they have anchored it and they put it in boxes and they said, this is what beyond physics means. Never understanding it's going to go way beyond physics. It has to. In everyday life, it has to. Let us review for a moment. No, let us not. Let us not. Let us sit here for a moment and love you. Yes, I want to teach you these things. Yes, I want to begin the, the discourse. Well, let me just for a moment. I want to sit on your lap. Because I know who you are. And it's been so long since I've seen you. And you've let me share your energy and you're doing it now. So many of you doing it now. Saying it's okay. For just a little while it's okay. And other humans would not understand this moment. When you go out on the street they wouldn't understand this moment. Let's have a reunion of sorts. Where you understand that everything given from this point on is given in total and complete love for you to move to the next step. Last week I opened the door of possibilities of getting out of human bias. I made statements like this that you cannot move into the next portion of the shift and the energy you are. You can't do it. Or the energy that most of you are in is biased in 3D, in singularity. It is the way you think because it's the way humans think. 
And so what you have to do is pick up the gauntlet, we say, and think differently. Out of that paradigm which you were born in. And that is difficult. For some of you it is impossible. We showed you the bias last week and we're not going to review all of it. We're just going to say that human beings are single directional, single digit, single biased creatures on the planet. In three dimensions, they go in one direction in time and only one direction. There is no concept of visiting the past, although they can do it any time they choose. They don't understand the paradigm of what old soul means. It's something untouchable in the past, you see, because they only go forward. And so already the bias is there. Only looking forward, you cannot move into the past with those eyes. It is forbidden because your reality has you on a track that only looks forward. We've said and stated before the, the illogic of the belief systems that are religious on the planet that have you going into an afterlife without ever having a forelife. And you don't take anything of it because the train of time only goes in one direction for you. And you can't change its speed. You don't think you have, even though you have in the last years. The train is going faster now, can't you feel it? The clocks don't move any different than they ever have, and that is relativity. Even that has been given to you, one, one of your famous scientists, and yet you won't acknowledge it for yourself, will you? You look in the mirror, you see one human being, you see one single soul. You talk about the higher self as being completely and totally removed somewhere up in the clouds. But not with you. Singular, you feel you are. There must be one God, there is only one way to God, there is only one path. And you're told by everyone you meet that you better be on it. Because when you die, if you're not, you'll be sorry. And that's singular, isn't it? You're on one ladder. You better be on the right ladder. You're told there's a God who's going to judge you if you're not on that right ladder. Even if you think you are, when you get to God, when you die, God's going to look at you and say, wrong ladder. <clears throat> So sorry. Does that sound like the love of God to you? It is the bias of the human being who applies everything singular to God. And that is how you think. Now, not all of you. This message is for those metaphysical. This message is for light workers. And what I'm going to describe here may not be you, but it represents a generic you that is the way humans think, even in a light worker group. They've got it figured out. I want you to place yourself for just a moment in a metaphorical scenario. Or you're in one of those psychic fairs. And there are booths all around you. There is a numerology booth. There's a bowl playing booth. There are musicians. There's a booth with many stones. Crystals included. There's a booth for astrology. And now I'm going to visit all of them. I'm going to show you the bias in each. <laughs> and I'm going to offend you all. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> Crying doesn't tell very good joke. <laughs> Sorry, I won't do it again, my partner. He warned me. This is not 
critical. It is an expose. Why is it that when humans, even in a psychic fair, even in a metaphysical place, go from place to place and they look at the, at, at, at the new thing, the newest thing, Perhaps it's a bowl, perhaps it's a stone, perhaps it's something that has been manufactured and made, perhaps it's a system, perhaps it's a, it's a process. Remember these words in this phrase and human beings look at it and they will look at the, the ones in the booth and they will say, what does it do? What does it do? There's a world-class numerologist in the room. And she already knows where I'm going before I start. But she's a quantum thinker. Numerology would seem to be one of the most linear esoteric sciences you could have. It distills large numbers down to one and then identifies the energy of the one number. That's what it looks like. But that's not what's going on. And in the numerology booth you arrive, and there it is, there's a big number one. And you're looking at it, and you say, what does it do? And what you're asking is, what does this energy do for me? What is a one doing here in a box? And what do you mean? What do you make of it? Now, from a total biased linear point of view, the one sits there alone looking at you. And the one behind the counter may explain, well, one means new beginnings. Well, thank you. That's what it means. Great. And you've had your linear answer, haven't you? Now, let's go to another dimension for a moment. What does the one think about it? It's a number, and it was not created alone. Do you think humanity developed the one, and then waited a few years and discovered the two? <laughs> no. No, it never belongs alone. Ever. It's part of a system. You can't put one in a box. And so it's going to ask you, well, where are my friends? Where are the other numbers? You can't put me in a box. Now that is a quantum one. And the human cannot ask, what does it do? What if you look at the number seven? Do you know its history? What if it came from 691? 691, you add it together, you get a 16. You add the 6 and the 1 together, and you get the 7. And the 7 stands alone in linearity, and the human being says, what does it do? And you say, well, it represents royalty and sacredness, and all those things that a numerology will say. But the number knows 691, you see. You're the one who distilled it to 7. And it wants you to ask the question, what was I doing when I was a six and a nine? And, and together, what did the six and the nine add up to? And then how did it relate to the one in order to get to the seven? What I'm telling you is that numerology is quantum. And you can never look at a number and say, what does it do? Now the numerologist knows this. And the numerologist will do their best to put the numbers together numbers with other numbers with you so that it develops a quantumness that describes something that is needed for you to know it's never about the one it cannot stand alone you cannot ask it what does it do imagine picking a letter out of the alphabet and separating it from a system that was designed for words and communications and looking at it and saying, what does it do? And the answer will be nothing without the others. Now that is a quantum thinker. 
There are and have been quantum sciences and procedures, processes on the planet for a very long time. And human beings want to linearize them all. Numerology is one. The second one, look at this. It yells at you, tarot. We have a world-class tarot reader here. And the human being wants to pick a card, any card. So you pick one tarot card and you put it on the table and the human being will tap it and will say, well, what does it mean? And the tarot reader will look at the human and say, nothing by itself. You've got to surround it with the other ones. It depends upon the spread. It depends upon the direction that it is facing. It gives a message because it must be combined with the rest of them given randomly in a synchronistic fashion. By the human being it involves. It requires consciousness to hover over it and ask for intent. But then the devil card pops out and the human being taps it and says, what does that mean? Because you're singular, you see. You built in, it's built in. And the tarot reader will try to explain that it's the collection of the random synchronistic attributes of the card that give it potential direction and will read the direction for you. And that is a quantum event. Do you see the difference? The human wants to take the singularity of the event and project it all the way to death. A human being will go into a psychic reader and the reader will give them a psychic reading and the human being will come out of the booth and say, this is what's going to happen to me. Never understanding. And a moment later, all that can change. A moment later, there might be an event in their life that brings them to their knees and opens their heart. And that's not their future anymore, you see. But they don't think that way. They see the linear track, and if someone tells them that's in their future, that's all they see. That's in their future. They don't allow themselves quantum thinking at all. Some human beings will, will start a life on that track that's singular and go all the way to the end. Take their last breath, thinking that's the only opportunity that they had to do was to walk in a straight line all their lives not understanding that in a quantum mind they can even stop the train if they want they can reverse it if they want they can live longer if they want all of these things are quantum thinking you move to the next booth and there they are glistening in front of you all of the bowls beautiful they are different colors they are the human mind goes clickety-clack. In its singularness, it's, it's asking the question. It likes, it likes the green one. What does it do? And the bowl master swallows hard. And he has to think of a linear answer. And so he gives the best he can in a linear fashion. Well, it happens to be the F note in music, and it is hard. And it affects the human chakra. Have you got one for my elbow? You might ask. <laughs> my elbow is sore. I need a bowl for my elbow. I'm a gardener. Do you have one for dirt? <laughs> and you know I'm right. You know I'm right. Human beings think in a singular fashion. They go right to the object and they say, what singular thing does this do? How many do I have to have so that I'm totally balanced? How many chakras, how many notes, how many colors? I'll take them all. <laughs> you see what I mean? Now let's back up a moment and I want to give you what the bowl master knows. They're different color, they're different sizes, they're different shapes. 
and indeed the vibrations in the air make a difference because they are the the note in music that is the fundamental that the ear hears surrounded by that fundamental note there are overtones and undertones some of them beyond human hearing there are vibrations that create an impurity and so that the bowl will speak in a certain way will war in a certain way will come together in a certain way and the human being cannot ask what does it do for here's a bowl that'll talk to your soul This will go into your ears and create a quantum event in the air around you, for the air knows who you are. It knows the bowl. The bowl knows you. This is a quantum event. If you choose to own the bowl, it knows it. If you choose to play it while you're alone in the dark, it comforts you. It's not about your heart. It's not about the color green. It's not about the F note. It's about a quantum intelligence that is at the soul level. And how does the bowl master explain that to the human who says, what does it do? He knows what it does. The particular bowl master who is here today is actually reinventing how to put quantumness within the crystal tones that have been around forever using the substances in unique ways to create a quantum event the essence of what is being created with a singing bowl is that which is a mini portal and that is the truth and if you've heard them played around you you know what I mean and they soothe your soul, don't they? And how does the bowl master then answer that? The person who stands in front of them and says, well, what does it do? Let us say you land from another planet and you've never heard music. And you arrive on the planet and you hear something amazing and you ask a human being, what is that? And they say, it's music. And you say, what does it do? How would you answer that? Music and art are already quantum. You sit in front of a maestro and he plays the sonorities of what you call vibrations in harmony. And some will smile and some will weep. You hear a song that has been done by a great composer and you're sitting in front of the symphony all playing together some will smile and some will weep some who know who the composer was will visit him as he wrote it <laughs> now that's quantum you see this is what music does and yet there is the human being who will say what does it do specifically I want this kind of music or that kind of I want something that will balance me I want something that I can play for my plants. <laughs> That's so singular. For in the sonorities of the chords, there's magic. It is indeed quantum. You sit on the bench in front of a beautiful artwork in the Louvre. And there are those who will sit and weep for an hour, watching the painting participating with the artist in every stroke looking at the genius of the colors that come together and swim in a way that sings a tune and that's quantum can you apply that to everyday life human being can you apply that to your singularity I'll get there in a minute On to the next booth, you visit the rocks. Now there's a rock master here. He knows who he is. Drawn by them, he is. 
got him into this business it did he's putting on the show today he loves rocks and humans will go from rock bin to rock bin and they will they will read the labels this one is for balance this one makes you float a little this one's for health this one's for grounding <laughs> You don't even have to ask. The bins are labeled. Humans like that. Pick up the rock. They don't even have to ask, what does it do? There's a label on it that says what it does. Well, I'm going to ask you something. Let us say that you pick up the rock that says it's for balance. And you hold it for a moment. Are you satisfied? Let us think quantum for a moment. Now this is where it gets good. Listen, how does the rock know who you are? Is it just gonna balance anyone? What if you're an especially difficult case? <laughs> you see, the rock, when held, knows who you are. If it indeed is one that is known metaphysically for balance, there's a quantum event going on. Human beings don't know that. They haven't followed through the thinking. They're so singular. They take, I'll take it. They put it in their pocket. Now I'm balanced. Yeah. Someday they'll discover it in their pocket in the closet then they'll know why their life is so bad. <laughs> that was another cry on joke. <laughs> Do you see the folly of this? It is fun. It is laughable. But you know I'm right. What does it do? What does it do? Will it help ground you? Okay, I'll take one. Now I'm grounded. No, no, no. How does it know what you want? There has got to be a quantum connection through time where the stone knows you. Oh, let us talk about the mother of all stones, the crystal. <laughs> and now you look at it and you say, oh, there's so many slopes. Look at the inclusions here. The crystal is a quantum stone. It has to be. It is the only known rock, if you want to call it that, on the planet that can hold memory. We've talked about the crystalline grid. We've talked about the crystals in the cave of creation. There's a reason why we call them crystalline, because they play a part in this planet. We've only been discussing for a little while. Long after you're gone, dear one, they hold the memory of who you were and who you are. Your soul essence always stays on the earth. That is what they do. You collect them and you put them in your house. Let us take a moment. You're in front of the booth. You know about crystals. You've been in the New Age a long time. You, you select one and you pick it up. And the one in the booth starts talking to you about it. It knows you, you know. Maybe you're not ready for that. Wow. It would like you to name it. And so you do. Now you have to buy it. <laughs> Once you've named it, you must buy it. These are the rules. <laughs> and what I mean by this is this. There is an interaction with the, with the rock. Geology is like that, and I will give you the information again we've given before. Just because it looks like a stone doesn't mean it is not alive. There is life in these, which you call inanimate objects that just lay there and balance or not balance or hold memory or look nice in your living room. There is a quantum intelligence of the ages. And some of them know you because they see the old soul in you and they respond to the dirt of the earth. And there's a cycle there. 
And the human being just takes it and puts it in a pocket, walks out, leaves it in the closet, not understanding that it's participating in a beautiful quantum cycle on this planet. From the dirt of the earth you arose. There's life in the dirt. There's life in the stones. Many of them will talk to you. The stone master knows. It's more than the colors that they look pretty. <laughs> they talk to him. He felt it right away. He has a history with them. That's why he loves them. And they love him. There's an affinity between the two. And that's quantum. Let's go to the last booth. This one gets complicated. <laughs> there it is, the oldest science on the planet. Astrology. Astrology might be called energy work, for it was probably the first kind of energy work on the planet. For it, it was a system that described the energy around you. Developed by a complex set of circumstances in orbital mechanics, with the sun being the fulcrum of the gravitational magnetic source, of the planets pushing and pulling on it, sending that to the earth, interfacing with the magnetic grid right into your DNA, and that is your astrological sign. You get your chart done. One chart, one human being. A human being will look at it. Well, what does it mean? What does it do? What does it mean to me? Is it something that tells my fortune? Is it going to help me in business? Is it going to help my sore elbow? Oh, how singular. And you know I'm right. You look at these things in a very singular way not understanding the profundity of any of it. Not really. Not after I tell you what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you a rhetorical question. It's one you can't answer. And yet you will have the answer intuitively in a quantum state and it won't be linear and that will disturb you. There's a world-class astrologist in the room and she's going to be one of the first ones to develop quantum astrology. And here are some issues. Old soul. Old soul, we have given you information about what the Akash means to you in a quantum state. There is no such thing as a past life, is there? You can't say you have a past life because when you look at yourself in the mirror, it is a culmination of all lives lived on the planet until you got to this place, old soul. You may have had shamanic backgrounds that got you to this place, old soul. The wisdom you carry in you is a reflection of all the lives you've lived. The earth knows it, you know it. The cave of creation knows it. There's a there's so much of the air around you knows it. The angels that came in with you, they know it. That's what allows the readers to see who you are so easily. You can't and they can because they can read the snowflakes. They can see the lifetimes, the energies that you've had here. That which makes you who you are. And if you believe that, I have a question for you. What is your astrological sign? Well, you say, well, I was born in February. No, no, no. I didn't ask you when you were born. I want to know what energy of astrology belongs to you, old soul. For if you are a combination, a soup of lifetimes, perhaps enough so that you were born in every single month and every single hour that exists, I want, to, I want you to talk to me now. What is your astrological sign? Is it all of them? Is it the most current one? Is it the one that has arisen in your Akash because it's the one that you pulled up on purpose? Is it possible for you to change your astrological attributes 
because you gave intent to do so. Now I'm going to leave that for you. But I will tell you there are those in the room who have. It's going to force astrology to look at the Akash. And this can only be done by one who can read it. And it's not going to be that hard to read it. For those of you who are becoming quantum will show it. The old soul in you is going to be seeable by those around you and they will see it in your eyes, the wisdom, the love. I've described some specialists today. I may have left out one. There is an energy of healing that has the ability to be sent long distance. There's four of you in here who can do that. One uses a device that is called radionics. The other do it all by themselves. Let us speak of the device for a moment because it seems like it's singular. It diagnoses your problem. And it does. Corporeally, in three dimensions, it says, here's what you need. Here's what your organ needs. Here are the specifics. And the human being is satisfied because that's what a doctor will do. It's very singular. You say, here's what's wrong. What does it do? It gives you these things. Okay, I'm happy. And then it proceeds to do something so quantum. You walk out of the room and you go to your house, wherever that may be, in whatever country that may be. And the operator and the computer together using radionics send the energy to you. And let me ask you this, how does it know where you are? Seven billion people on the earth and it's going to go right to your house and go right into your body. How does it know where you are? The healer in here who can read you over the phone and send healing to you can look at the attributes in your eyes and send healing to you. And he can. And he knows who he is. When he sends the energy out into the ethers, how does it know where you are? And it's the only answer I can give you, and it's a beautiful answer, and I'm going to give it to you now as we close. Because every molecule of air knows who you are. Every speck of dust on the planet knows who you are. It's all part of a system that you created. All of the earth, all of the things upon it, designed by a creator which is inside you, in your DNA. This shift that is happening to the planet is awakening you to that. Becoming quantum isn't just thinking differently. It's touching the face of the creator within your cellular structure. Look at yourself in the mirror. How many of you can see that? And there aren't many. For in 3D, you just look at an aging human being. That's all you can do. Blessed is the human who can go past it. I dare you to stare at each other's eyes in the mirror. You in the mirror. <laughs> do it for a long time. Try smiling a little. Try congratulating yourself for being here. Try seeing the enormous group that you represent in the universe, the piece of the creator that you are. And perhaps even the joke that you can't see it. All of these things I give you, for they are needed for you to do what you came for. I want to tell you it's a quantum thinker who can look at a human being and love them no matter what they've done. Who can meet them for the first time and know they're an old soul. To look at humanity in general and not judge them but love them. To look at solutions and not problems. That's a quantum thinker. For they see the history. They see the cycle of life and they see the connection with nature 
the part that the animals play in all things, the part that the air plays, the rocks, the energy, the systems, all designed not to be singular. What does it do? Maybe it'll wake you up to the potentials that are yours in front of you. You must start to think quantum just a little. In order to grab these tools which are outside of your purview. The acupuncturist who works with the 12 meridians has got to start looking at the meridians above the meridians and above those meridians. To start putting what would be the esoteric needles in places that don't seem to even exist. Science is going to move in that direction anyway. Are you going to let physics move on and leave the body behind? Are you going to, in your singularity, separate it so greatly you don't understand that physics is related to everything inside you? Every molecule, every atom, begging for you to find that soup of the Creator inside. There's a glue there. It's what's going to change this planet. We don't even have a name for it. And so we say it's human consciousness. That's the message of this day as we sit and wash your feet. As we sit and love you. Become quantum. I am Cryon, lover of humanity. And so it is.